Good afternoon and welcome to the 2022 Courage Awards. Please welcome your host, Sue Lingo. Hi everyone. I hope you can see me because I'm not seeing myself on here. Let me know if you can't see me <laughs> and we will fix that as soon as possible. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I wanted to say a big good afternoon to, oh, you can't see me. Thank you for letting me know. Hi, Zachary, by the way. Um, good afternoon, honored recipients and special guests. Welcome to the 17th Annual Courage Awards presented by the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital and the Glen Rose Foundation. Woo, virtual again. But that's okay. I know you guys will still bring the positive and, and cheer on the chats for sure. Um, we have to start, of course, by acknowledging that we are gathered today at the traditional meeting place and home for many Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Anishinaabe, Blackfoot, Stony Nakoda, Dene, Inuit, and Metis peoples, as identified in Treaty 6 and Metis Region 4 territory. My name is Sue Lingo. I'm an anchor and I'm the health reporter for Global Edmonton. It is a huge honor to be here once again for the Courage Awards this year. It's been, I've lost track, countless years that I've done this, this award um, ceremony and the stories for the, for the award recipients. And it's always my favorite event of the year. And I think you'll understand why um, as you watch, if this is your first time to the Courage Awards. Um, it's always really heartwarming and really positive, which of course is what we all need right now. Um, of course, the Courage Awards would not happen without a number of very important people. And that includes the Ferry family who have been proudly sponsoring this event for many years now. So can we all have a huge virtual clap for the Ferry family? I know that uh, they're watching right now and it's so nice to have you and thank you for all your support over the years. Um, today, we proudly honor this year's three Courage Award recipients, and they are Jan Fletcher, Michael McCready, and Jenna Hoff. We hope you are as inspired by their stories as we are. These are truly incredible people, and we'll show you their stories shortly here. But first, I really want to encourage you. Oh, I see some virtual clapping there. Nice work. Um, I really want to encourage you to share your reactions to the stories and, of course, some words of encouragement to the winners because they can't hear your clapping. So I'm sure they would really love to see some words as you're watching the stories. So you can put those on the chat feature here on Zoom. So if you just click on the chat button, which is at the bottom of your screen there, and you can change the option to all panelists and attendees or everyone, I think that'll work too, um, so that everyone can see your message. And then we'll share some of them on social media after, and, and I'll mention a few of them after we watch this video. So it would be really great if you can participate that way, send some encouragement. Um, but yeah, let's get going. Are you ready to meet some amazing people? A huge congratulations to Jan, Michael, and Jenna, and we hope you enjoy this presentation. Courage is part of the essence of the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital. Courage provides strength when we feel weak, determination when we feel like giving up, and hope when we feel all is hopeless. Patients work every day at the Glen Rose, not only to relearn life skills, but to find new ways to embrace and enjoy life. Their courage inspires us all and is a testament to how important the Glen Rose is. Today, we are proud to present this year's three Courage Award recipients and their stories of conquering tremendous obstacles. I am happy and proud to have produced the global news segments you'll be seeing during this program. It was a huge honor to meet each of our winners and to share their amazing stories. We will also share messages from the hospital and the foundation representing the thousands of people who work to assist the patients in their recovery journeys at the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital. Most importantly, you will hear messages from each of the recipients who will share how the Glen Rose has helped inspire their courage. 
As the program progresses, we invite you to share your favorite moments on social media using the hashtag Courage Awards. We also welcome you to tag the Glen Rose Foundation. Now before we meet our recipients, here is Lynette Lutz, Senior Operating Officer of the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital, to share some remarks. Hi, I'm Lynette Lutz, the Senior Operating Officer for the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital. On behalf of the Facility Medical Director, Dr. Chester Ho, and myself, I'm honoured to welcome you to the 2022 Courage Awards ceremony. For the past couple of years, we've connected virtually for the Courage Awards. I'm grateful for the opportunity to recognize this year's extraordinary recipients together again. The Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital is one of the largest rehabilitation hospitals in North America, with nearly 80,000 patient visits each year. Our hospital provides complex rehabilitative care to patients of all ages. With over 100 specialized inpatient and outpatient programs, it's also a teaching hospital where students come to learn from the best. And our commitment to research ensures innovation is at the forefront of what we do. The Glen Rose will always be a place of understanding and advocacy for people across the lifespan in building their abilities for life. I'm so pleased to take part in today's ceremony and to acknowledge the patients who demonstrated courage and overcame immense adversity during the rehabilitation journeys at the Glen Rose. Thank you to the team members who took the time to nominate individuals for the Courage Awards. I'm inspired by the patients I've met and their dedication to recovery. I would like to emphasize that so many individuals amaze us each and every day, and it was a difficult task for the selection committee to choose just three award recipients. On behalf of the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital, and Alberta Health Services, welcome. Thank you for joining us today and congratulations to the 2022 Courage Award recipients. Thank you, Lynette. I know many of the frontline staff from the Glen Rose and other care centres are joining us today. Thank you. We truly appreciate your dedication, courage and selflessness every day and especially during this very challenging time. All the recipients speak of their care teams as being invaluable to their recoveries and we salute all of you here today. Now, let's meet the 2022 Courage Award winners. Our first recipient is Jan Fletcher. When this Sherwood Park woman was seriously injured after the horse she was riding was spooked by bison, doctors told her she wouldn't walk again, let alone ride. Now, staff of the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital are honoring her with a Courage Award for getting back in the saddle. Here's her story, followed by some words from Jan on receiving this award. He's all sad now. Wager the horse is getting used to his owner's new way of getting around after an accident last fall. He bolted. I couldn't stop him. He's never, and I swear I've had him 13 years, he's never moved that fast in his whole entire life. Jan Fletcher was riding wager near Elk Island National Park when some bison ran out of the trees, spooking the horse. Jan attempted an emergency dismount. I didn't realize we were going as fast as we were, and I didn't think, oh, I'm going to hit pavement and I'm probably not going to bounce so good. The 62-year-old broke her spine in six places and was told she'd likely never walk again. But the most devastating prospect for Jan was never riding again. I've been riding since I was four years old. It's, it's just, it's your soul. From day one of her rehabilitation at the Glen Rose Hospital, Jan made it clear her goal was to get back in the saddle. She did endless core work, but recreational therapist Pam Russ, a horse lover herself, knew Jan would need more. It's just not the same to get your feet in the stirrups, to practice lifting your leg over the horn, all of that. So we figured that, hey, what's the best way to do it but actually bring in the piece of equipment? So Pam brought her saddle to the hospital and the team incorporated it into Jan's therapy. Yeah, that's awesome. How does that feel? Feels good. <laughs> Jan never missed a session, even when her dog, Talinka, died a few weeks later. She also never lost her sense of humor, giving each of her paralyzed legs a name. I have Eddie and Freddie. Freddie's generally fairly accommodating. Eddie is such a jerk, like, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Staff say Jan kept the other patients smiling. She's very inspirational. Everybody was always asking to know, how did the saddle go today? When are you going to get back on the horse? Two, three. 
This is the second time Jan has been back on Wager since the accident, less than a year ago. <laughs> yes. She used to guide the horse with her legs. Now he's learning to listen to her voice. Go, we're turning. I'm ready for a turn. Jan has explained to Wager her injuries were not his fault. It was her choice to jump off and hers to get back on. Like you can pull covers over your head and give up, or you can just push through. I would just like to say thank you so much for the award. Um, I don't feel really deserving of it. I think there's a lot of um, people struggling at the Glen Rose that, that also deserve Courage Awards. Um, I would especially like to say thanks to Pam and to Dean, my OT and my PT. They encouraged me to get on a saddle and they listened to what I wanted to accomplish once I was released from the Glen Rose. Um, but the staff, the doctors, the all the PT people, the nurses, all, all absolutely amazing, amazing people. It's If you have to be in a medical facility, that's probably the best facility to be in. They're very encouraging. Um, they push even when you don't want to be pushed. It was, it was an experience I will never forget. Thank you, everyone. Thank you and congratulations, Jan. Our second recipient this afternoon is Michael Mercredi. In the face of both excruciating pain and grief, this Paddle Prairie man acted as a shining light for others. Here's his story followed by his thoughts on this award. When Michael Mercredi was fighting for his life in the intensive care unit with COVID-19, he recorded this message. Get vaccinated. Whatever you can to keep your health because it's your health. Michael wanted to warn everyone about something that nearly killed him. I never wish this on any, my worst enemy. I don't care who it is. It's what I went through. I never want to see somebody else go through that. COVID came near the end of 2021, a dark year for Michael. In June, his wife Hazel and son Trevor were in a serious car crash. She didn't make it. They phoned me at five in the morning and said, your wife's heart stopped, you know, you wake up, she's not thinking that, right? And then she passed away that next day, like, and it was so sad. His son was transferred to the Glen Rose Hospital, where Michael later joined him for rehabilitation. Despite all his trauma, he was very chatty, he would talk with the other staff, he would talk with the other patients, always in a good mood. He was a, a light on the unit for a lot of people. Let's put that around each ear and in your nose. When Michael arrived at the Glen Rose, his lungs were so weak he could barely move, but he could always laugh. That's why you get smart, you met you go first. <laughs> As he gained strength, he was grateful to play games and recreational therapy, offering friendly competitions in crib, cheering on other patients and cheering up his hospital roommate. She used to sing to me and I used to pray with her every day, both of us. Every day I tell her, if you will sing, sing me a song, we'll pray. Glen Rose staff will honor the 56-year-old with a Courage Award. You're in the hospital to work on you. If you can help people around you, that's really something impressive and inspiring. Michael made this piece in art therapy. He hangs it at home as a reminder of what he's overcome. He plans to return to the Glen Rose as a volunteer. What they give me, I like to give back. That's how I operate. I'd like to thank the Glen Rose for giving me this uh, Courage Award. I didn't expect to have this. But I'd like to thank the doctors, the nurses, the staff, the, the therapists who got me on my feet. Before that, I couldn't walk. I was paralyzed. Thank Ben, uh, Heather, Janine for uh, being the artwork to show me some artwork, and uh, Daryl, and a few other staff members and the nurses, but I forget their names. 
I didn't see much of the, anybody anymore. Due to my COVID, I, I don't uh, have memories too good with faces, I know, but names I forgot. You're all in my heart, and I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart forever. You know, it wasn't for you guys, I was one breath away. And it was pretty well written off, they call it. But I guess the guy upstairs said, oh no, Mike, you're not going to come up here yet. Just keep your prayer strong and faith going. So I done that all the time. I prayed with the staff here. I prayed with the, 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 the patients. I did a lot of things, you know, just to try to use my mind to get well. I'm happy I'm here today to pick up this award. It's going to be with from my heart, this thing I'll always cherish it at home. So thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations, Michael. Now, before we meet the third award recipient, I'd like to introduce the president and CEO of the Glen Rose Hospital Foundation, Mark Corthius. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Corthius, and I am the President and CEO of the Glen Rose Hospital Foundation. It's a privilege to be here with you today in the company of our courageous award winners, their families, Glen Rose Hospital staff, and the community. At the Glen Rose Foundation, we proudly support the advancement of specialized rehabilitative care, new technologies, and emerging research that has the potential to help reimagine human ability. Support through our donors makes life-changing differences to patients and their families. Thank you for joining us today and supporting the Glen Rose, Alberta's only hospital dedicated to supporting rehabilitation. I'd also like to take a few moments and thank the people who make this event possible. The Courage Award Selection Committee is made up of our generous supporters, including community members, previous recipients, and healthcare experts. The committee reviews all the nominations and has the difficult task of choosing the winners. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you to Global Edmonton, who has proudly supported this event for many years, including filming and producing the segments you see today. And a special thanks to Sue Ling Go, who not only serves on the selection committee, but also interviews our recipients and emcees the event. She's been part of the Courage Awards since the very beginning. Thank you, Sue Ling. Also, I'd like to thank Abby Lane Holmes for kindly allowing us their space for recording portions of this event. And thank you to the Glen Rose Hospital staff who take the time to nominate their remarkable patients. Finally, the Ferry family have sponsored this event for many years, and we are grateful for their continued support of the Courage Awards. Their commitment to these awards is an amazing example of how instrumental our donors are in transforming lives. Thank you all for attending today, and congratulations, Jan, Michael, and Jenna. Thank you, Mark. Our final recipient of a 2022 Courage Award is Jenna Hoff. Talking and moving are difficult for her, but that doesn't stop her from caring for and inspiring others. Here is Jenna's journey and a message from her on this award. My home country is Japan. These English as a second language students are learning a new way to speak from someone who also had to master a new method of communication. Today we are going to be talking about animals. I see two beautiful animals. <laughs> I love people so much and I really love spending time with newcomers and hearing their diverse perspectives on life. Jenna Hoff compares her communication device to glasses, simply a tool to help in life. The 42-year-old has a disability that makes using her own voice difficult, and after handwriting messages for years, got this special tablet through the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital. To be able to communicate well allows me to participate in a wide variety of life's activities, and that is something I truly value. We were just so pleased to find out that uh, by giving her the right tools, that she could just do so many wonderful things. Speech-language pathologist Bruce Helmbold worked with Jenna to use the technology efficiently, minimizing pauses in conversations. She also added a dash of her sense of humor. <laughs> to help Jenna share that sparkling personality, despite her changing mobility needs, occupational therapist Matt Fong built a mount to hold up the iPad on her walker. 
often with these kinds of devices. Um, some people might only use them in a very small context just to be able to communicate their needs, but Jenna takes it to a whole different level. Jenna is a public speaker at her church, an author, and an advocate for adoption. She and her husband, Eric, have adopted three children from Alberta's foster care system. I know very well what it is like to face incredibly challenging and painful things. And so I want to devote my life to trying to make a difference for others, including for kids who need a family. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna says she can relate to her students who rely on the kindness of others and give it right back. She is truly a gem and an exception to the rule. And that's why she just makes the room light up wherever she goes. Sulingo, Global News. I am very grateful for this award and appreciate the kindness of the professionals from the Glen Rose who nominated me. Truly, they are the ones who deserve to be recognized not only for the tremendous difference they have made in my life, but for how they work day after day to help people facing challenging medical situations. And I am also grateful from my heart to my family and all those who have walked beside me on my journey. All these people are the ones truly worthy of an award. Thank you and congratulations, Jenna. Please join me in a huge round of virtual applause for all three of this year's recipients. Congratulations to all of you. I hope you can see me again. How amazing are those people? Isn't it just so heartwarming and inspiring to see that there are people like that in our world? Um, I was looking at um, a lot of the messages that you also kindly sent over the chat, and I noticed a lot of the same words kept coming up. Inspiring, strength, amazing, incredible, optimism, selflessness. So I think that, yeah, all those words definitely describe our, our three recipients this year. Um, one thing I, I noticed when I was interviewing um, all three was they all, all three of them said, no, I don't deserve this award. It's the staff of the Glen Rose who deserve this award. And I think that um, obviously they all could not have done it without each other. And, and I know from experience that the staff uh, at the Glen Rose is truly amazing and creative, right? We saw in those stories how they brought in the saddle for Jen and then um, Matt was working on that special mount for Jenna's um, walker. So, I mean, these people are just so multi-talented and they just think outside of the box. And I think that's why that these patients do so well. Um, it does make a difference for sure. Um, but I just, you know, thank you all so much for your messages and um, thank you for watching. Um, and, and a huge congratulations to all three of our recipients today. Um, I just wanted to um, thank uh, Jan, Michael, and Jenna, um, all of you, for allowing us to learn from each of your stories and be inspired by your strength and celebrate your amazing spirit. I think this is definitely a lift that everyone can use lately, and um, we love your attitude. So it's been an absolute pleasure in helping to recognize all three of you today. Um, don't forget to post you know, on Twitter uh, your messages as well and, and tag the Glen Rose um, Foundation and then we'll be able to share them as well. Um, but thank you again so much for watching and this concludes the 2022 Courage Awards. Huge congratulations again. Take care, stay safe.